Hello everyone. Today we will be looking at 1 John the third chapter, the first through the third verse, and it reads, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. And let us pray. Most gracious and eternal God, creator of the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is therein. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, my God. We come in all humility and humbleness in the name of Jesus to say thank you for this day. Thank you for this word. We ask that you will anoint this word, that you will use this word for your glory. Send it out, O oh God, to accomplish what you wish have it to do. We ask it did not return to you void. We thank you, Father, for the love of God that is shed abroad in our hearts by your Holy Spirit and for your presence being in the midst. You are so wonderful. You are so worthy of everything, O oh God. And it is in Jesus' name we praise you. Amen. Sons of God, children of God, we have to believe that we are truly blessed. For when we trusted in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, at that moment when we believed, we were born into the family of God. And yet as young children in the Lord or as immature children of God, we have no vision, not even a clue of all the love, peace, healing, success, the wealth and blessings that belong to us because of the position that God sees us in, in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And according to God's word, it all belongs to us. Listen. When we were sinners, we lived in the kingdom of darkness. But when we believed, we were translated or transferred into the kingdom of God's dear son. And you can reference that in Colossians, the first chapter, the 13th verse. So we have access by faith to everything that is in the kingdom of God. And God's word says in 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, the 21st through the 22nd verse, and you can read it all for yourself when you get a chance. All things are yours. You see, we are blessed to be saved because of what God has done for us through his son, Jesus, and not by anything we have or can do for ourselves. We have access into his kingdom by faith and everything in it is ours because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus because of the blood of Jesus that God knows was used to wash away our stains of sins. So we are forgiven for everything that we ever did, are doing, or will do to disappoint God. We have to understand that the old person that we were, the old attitude, the old way of thinking, died with Christ on the cross. The old us was buried with Christ. And when Christ rose from the dead after three days, we rose with him as a new person in a new kingdom. So we are now in Christ, our new spiritual position. And this is how and where God sees us. You may be even now looking back over your life and wondering why. Why is it that God who sees and knows everything about me, is still doing so many amazing things for me. Why? Why is he always there for me, even when I don't recognize it right away? And I constantly turn my back on him. Why? And it's so plain to see his action. It's because he loves us. It's because he loves you. Ephesians, the second chapter, the fourth through the sixth verse says, But God, who is rich in mercy, 
for his great love wherewith he loves us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, our new spiritual position. Amen. We have to understand. We have to know. We have to believe that everything is in Christ Jesus. We are made right with God and have peace with God because we are now in Christ, who is our righteousness. Because we are in Christ, we are accepted by God in heaven. And because Christ lives in us, he has the ability to love through us and to live through us here on earth. God loves us. We have to realize that. We have to understand that. We have to believe that. He loves us and he wants us to dwell in his presence. As children of God, he wants us to be holy, set apart, and be acceptable to him. This reminds me of so many stories in the Bible about being made acceptable. But let's look at the parable of the prodigal son. And you can reference that in Luke, the 15th chapter, the 11th through the 32nd verse. But we're going to just start here at verse 20. And it reads, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand or his finger and shoes on his feet. Amen. Now, when the prodigal son returned to his father, he had no idea how the father would respond. He didn't know if he would be received or not. He didn't know if he would be welcomed or not. But the word says, even a great way off, his father saw him and with compassion ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So by his actions, the son knew how his father felt and that he was forgiven. But according to verse 21, knowing what he had did and that he was still dirty and not presentable, the son felt unworthy. But the father said, and look at verse 22. But the father said to the servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Now let's look at this. Putting on the best robe made the son conscious of the fact that he was now acceptable to his father. He was clean and presentable and now able to be in his presence as a son. For us who are Christians, the best robe is Jesus Christ. He is our righteousness, our ability to be acceptable to God. His blood made us clean, and now we are able to be in God's presence as sons and daughters. God has made us acceptable to himself, and he wants us to be aware of our acceptance in him. Amen? The verse says, put a ring on his finger. This signifies authority, honor, or trust. A good example is Joseph in Egypt when he explained or interpreted the Pharaoh's dreams. Afterwards, he was exalted to honor, given the king's ring, and was allowed to represent the king in all of Egypt. And God has chosen us to be representatives of Christ in the world. 2 Corinthians 5 and 20 says, Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. Concerning sonship, he said, put shoes on his feet. This represents sonship. Servants were barefoot. Only sons wore shoes in the house. So now with the robe, ring, and shoes, the son knew 
he was not only loved and forgiven, but was made aware of the fact that he will always be a son. Our Heavenly Father wants us to know, believe, and accept the same thing. To always remember and be aware of the fact that we are his children. And if children, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. And you can reference that in Romans the 8th chapter, the 16th through the 17th verse. God loves us and delights in us, not just to make us happy, but for his own pleasure and his own satisfaction. We have to get to a place to know and understand who we are and who we are in God. We are in Christ. The scripture says the mystery is that we are in Christ, the hope of glory. And so when we realize that we are in Christ and Christ is in us, we come to understand that we can truly rest in him and have peace in him. Why? Because it's God in us working both the will and to do of his good pleasure. And for those of us that have been looking for love and looking for uh, acceptance and looking for a, a friend and all these things that we've been searching for for all our lives, Everything that we want and desire is in Christ. He is a friend, faithful. He loves us unconditionally. The scripture says in Romans 8 chapter, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Now sin will separate you from his presence, but he said nothing will cause him to stop loving us. So when you understand that, all these things that we desire is in Christ. Why? Because we are in Christ. That's our new spiritual position. And because it is our new spiritual position, anytime God looks upon us, he loves us. Why? Because he sees his son. He sees the evidence of what his son did for us. He sees the blood of Jesus that was applied to our lives. And so when you think about the things that you have done in your life, and begin to feel as the prodigal son did that you're not worthy. Please understand that if you have received Jesus Christ into your life to be your Lord and your Savior, if you believe that he died for your sins and rose again after the third day, hallelujah, for your justification, and that he is now seated on the right hand of the Father, you are a child of God. Jesus Christ is our righteousness. He is the only way to God. And when God looks at you and sees the blood, he knows that you belong to him. So I just want to encourage everyone to know that we have life and that more abundantly. And we have eternal life because we believe. We love God. We appreciate him for everything that he has done for us and in us through his son. And once that knowledge is real to you, you'll begin to sit back and say, you know what? It's not, it's not that bad. I, I don't have to deal with all this drama. I don't have to deal with all this confusion. I don't have to be concerned about who likes me or who don't. I don't have to be concerned about who wants to be around me or who don't. I don't have to be concerned about the things that are going on in this world because my hope is in Christ. And according to his word, he is concerned about the righteous and his ear is always listening to their prayers. So I just want to encourage everyone Read the word of God. Look to God from whence cometh all of your help. For it is in Christ, in that new spiritual position, that you are safe in the arms of God. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we're so thankful for your word. We're so thankful for your goodness, your mercy, and your amazing grace. We're so thankful, O oh God, because everything that we need is in Christ. And everything that is in the kingdom of God belongs to us. 
We're so thankful, oh God, because in that kingdom is acceptance. In that kingdom is love. In that kingdom is healing. In that kingdom is deliverance. In that kingdom, oh God, is salvation. In that kingdom is prosperity, oh God. In that kingdom is wisdom. In that kingdom, oh God, is understanding. And we are so thankful on today to know that we have been transferred or translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We're so glad to know, oh God, and help us to understand, to believe, and to accept it, the fact that you love us, that we will always be your children, because you said in your word you would not lose one. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for your goodness. We're so thankful for your son, Jesus. We are so thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we ask even the more that your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen.